Hey Misfits, it's Misfit Anthony and Misfits Cadence. Uh, you almost forgot your name. I almost there. forgot my name. Almost forgot your <laughs> name there. there. Cadence is back. She's back with a vengeance. <laughs> and so I dragged her back to the studio with promises of something mysterious, something you can't get your hands on, but we got our hands on it. So uh Lorcata is the game. If you guys haven't heard of it, of course, it's the new Disney trading card game. And we would have some pretty boxes, but honestly, we were barely able to get our hands on the three starter decks. And that was pretty much it. And uh, I quickly taught you a game. Like I said, I taught you in like, what, five minutes or less? Yeah, if you've ever played any type of trading card game, it has very similar mechanics with its own flavor to it. And so yeah. it's very easy to pick up. And if you've never played a trading card game because you haven't wanted to get into one because it didn't have a theme or a, you know, style that you liked, this is very easy accessible for people of all ages, whether you have children who are six or seven. I can who, teach this to my Disney? niece. Who and likes everybody Disney? likes Disney. Everybody my grandmother likes Disney. <laughs> I love Disney. My niece loves Disney. Oh, yeah. We need to get Disney passes this year. Mm, yeah, I think so. You're, you're, you're jonesing for some Disney. So you're not wrong. I mean, honestly, when they announced it and up to the, the like, the heat on this game was off the charts before it even got to when they released it at Gen Con. Because Gen Con was, kind of, I guess, the first official kind of release, mm -hmm. more or less, of it. And we were at Gen Con. And the lines, literally, the first day, they didn't, ex they didn't know what they were getting into. And they literally had, like, a riot of people, like, rushing the line and getting ahead everybody was like a big i saw was, videos from that it was i was a not mess. there i it saw was a mess yeah. so they at least after that they kind of um they kind of organized it a bit better but they literally had people getting in line the night before at six o'clock when the con was like not even done yet mm -hmm. lining up the night before to get this product until the next day yes. like they camped out and slept on gen con's floor and i'm like i don't remember ever wanting a game bad enough like, maybe if I... Would you do that? You okay, do that? I uh -oh. actually have done uh -oh. that, like, uh -oh. so many times uh -oh. in my life. I actually traveled with my best friend when I was 18, right out of high school, to New York City. And we uh -oh. slept outside of where the red carpet premiere was for the Harry Potter Deathly Hollows Part 2. Oh, um, okay. We stayed right. out right. there for three days. And we actually made it on the red carpet and got to meet the stars. And I got a book See, signed. But that's, but that's and, a little different, I feel like. But it's, it's not a but board I've also, game. But I've done that for books. I've camped out for, like, pre-release. Now you can, you can buy pre-order like books and get the go pick them up at Barnes and Noble the day of or the yeah, day before yeah. where back in the day oh, yeah. you and I did that for like the place that so I've for the PlayStation 3 I think it was I sat out and camped out that's every also, night that's that feels a little bit different too but a book I mean so, I totally would for okay, a board well, game. okay. I totally just for would. sake of argument these people could not get out of line yeah that's how it was all. yeah to pee to buy food. Well, I mean, you okay, have, you no, have no, a couple that's, you, that's when you have, you have a partner a couple people that well, yeah, I understand, but to pee... You yeah. have to have a partner to you have have a partner. Spot. But yeah. almost, you could have gotten out of line for a PlayStation to go pee. They no, you could, no, no, you could no, not. You had to have no, someone. No, like, no, I had to no. specifically when I was... Uh, this, it took me two nights. This, I had to man call somebody lie, to come obviously. sit in my chair and me get up and go use the bathroom and come back. and then I wouldn't sit in line that long for a cure for diabetes. Me, me, I, I would. But anyway, so before we get off topic on the riots of Lorcana or whatever, the I point is, the, the point is, you would totally I would have done it. it. So <laughs> the point is, this game is, is, it has the hype. It has all the Disney stuff. We played it. And before I even get into my impressions on it, because I've already played it quite a few times, what is your, what is your first take on actually playing Lorcana for the first time? Was it, would it be worth the wait, the, the waiting in line overnight? Um, and how do you feel about the game overall? Hmm. So, I definitely regret not buying it now that I've seen it. Okay. Uh, my initial thought was I've played several trading card games, and although I do like them, I've just kind of moved out of that era in my life because of all of the upkeep and the monetary value oh, yeah. that has oh, yeah. to go into yeah. it and the time. Sure. And although I still have some of them, I just don't play them as much anymore. Um, but this definitely was a lot of fun to play. There was things I liked about it. So mm. my first initial thing that I liked was that you don't have to have like a certain value of money or certain cards to come out in order for you to be able to play your cards. There's, everybody, no, there's no mana issue. Yeah, everybody starts out with the same concept. You all start out with one, you know, money or what do they call it in this game? They call it ink. Okay, you start out with one ink and mm -hmm. then each turn you get an additional ink. Right. Pretty much. So we all started on an even playing field and you don't have to worry about whether you are or are not going to be able to play your cards because you are going to be able to play your cards. It's just how you chain them. So I think that's very accessible and you're not stuck feeling frustrated that you put so much time into building a deck and then you can't get the right card out. So now, I, will, I, will, I will go on record now saying that is absolutely one of the best things I love about games like this. And it's something that um, 
is has been done before. This isn't the first time it's been no, done. No, I've seen it before. It's yeah. been in older CC or TCGs. It's been in the old World uh, World uh, Warcraft TCG did it. Um, but it's a concept that doesn't, I think, get used often enough. But lately, I've seen it pop up in multiple mm -hmm. TCGs lately. And finally, people kind of caught on. Like, we can make a game where you're not sitting here going, well, I only have blue mana. I guess this game's done. You know what I mean? We've yeah. all, had those, we've all yeah. had those games where it's like, I didn't draw the land I need, so it's game over. I didn't draw whatever color I need. Yeah. And so, yeah. No, absolutely 100% agree with you on that one. That, that, I think, makes a game flow a lot better. Yeah, and I like the versatility. Like, earlier, I got... um. Maui out and he cost eight which you said and initially I know it was gonna take a while to build up to him So I just flipped him over and used him as yeah. ink which you know it allows versatility of play So mm -hmm. that's also nice. I think the artwork's great. I absolutely mm -hmm. love it when I saw Yzma That's when I this came out and that's one of my family's favorite movies and that's my favorite Disney villain I, 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 like, yeah, yeah, the, I love the, Yzma the, and as soon as she came on I was yeah. like oh I need I need to have this in my oh, life yeah. I like how you know with Ariel you compare her with the Dinglehopper item and they they work off of each other and I like that you know this is something that while it's complex enough for people who have played a lot of trading card games to be able to play and enjoy it's also simple enough that my niece is going to be able to understand this because as soon as she sees the Dinglehopper she's going to understand you know oh yeah Oh, yeah. It works with totally. Ariel. Totally. And and there's obviously mirrors to Magic and some of the other uh, card games that we've played before. Obviously, uh, and I will ask, what do you think of um, the interaction? So in this game, in Lorcana, and if you haven't played a, a card game, most everybody who watches this probably has. you played Magic, you played other games. The interactivity of this is more restricted. Like in Magic, you can do things under the people's turns. Like it goes around, and even though it's your turn, I will have cards I can play on your turn. I can either, you know, destroy things or do stuff. This game takes the approach of, and I, I think FFG uses more often than not, but where your turn is your own turn, nobody can mess with it, and then you're done, and it goes on to the next person's mm -hmm. turn. So I, I, how do you feel in what way you think that restricts or helps the gameplay? Because to me... I feel that in one way it does take away from gameplay. It, mm -hmm. it loses a bit of strategy in that regard that you can't simultaneously play, kind of. On the other hand, it does make it simple enough where anybody coming into these kind of games, they don't have to worry about any rules, interactions, or problems. They can't they like go like this and go, uh, you got a counter spell, you know? No kid's gonna have to worry about getting counter spelled and losing their dingle hopper out of the gate, you know what okay. I mean? They just play the dingle hopper and they're good. Yeah. But on the other hand, on the high end of it, since I'm a magic player and a TCG player, I feel that does restrict strategy. How do you feel how do you feel about the whole your whole turn is your own turn thing and no one messes with it? From a personal standpoint, I am more of an aggressive player, and my favorite part of board games is interactions. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't play as many co-ops. I do like some co-ops. There are some that are done well. Right. But um, I tend to like player interaction. I tend to like, you know, being able to have a presence and be completely active. I'm not as big a fan if I have to wait 20 minutes for it to come back around to my turn. Right. Or, you know, if there's no interaction. Oh, yeah. The turns um, at least do move fast, though, because it's They do too fast. Yeah, so yeah. from a personal standpoint, I kind of wish there was more of that interaction but i have noticed that trending right now a lot of games that i've seen released this past year have taken out more of those aggressive mechanics that tend to be off-putting to i have noticed that as well yeah. yeah i think those mechanics tend to be off-putting to people who are new coming into these hobbies and so i think that that's something you kind of work yourself up to once you feel more comfortable with the mechanics so i think this allows more players to be able to access this game yeah and I agree. I yeah. agree in that. I, I, I feel sad in one way because of that, but on the other hand, I think it was a smart move on their part, especially since it's more of a, I think, a younger-themed game just because of all the Disney stuff. Not that older people won't play it, but because younger people will be more attracted to it because it is Disney-themed, I think that helps that out a lot. Although, ironically, like, you say that about games. I Like, Thunder Road's, like, one of my favorite games lately, which is all about just completely destroying, you know, <laughs> your, everybody else in the game or whatever. So, um, but, yeah, you're, you're right. There are games that are kind of leaning more towards kind of you do your thing and I do my thing and we're either, even if it's not co-op, you know what I mean? Even yeah. if there's a winner, it's like you do your thing and I do well, my what thing. What was it at the Play the New um, Archaeus Society, which is similar to Ethnos, and I think it's by the same people. And I should it, not play those. Oh, it plays... Very, very similar, but it took away that like almost area control war little fit. And I, did more I, of a I tracker. actually, I did, I heard about that. I remember seeing mm -hmm. something about so that. I think, whatever, so I think that's just more trending to make it more friendly because mm -hmm. those of us who are already into games were already into games, yeah. but like those who are just coming into the, the gaming industry. It may be a little off to have general, such like yeah. an aggressive yeah. play style, and it might just be nice to have a little bit where you get the feel of your own 
bored and you have total control you of your of, area. You kind of do your thing, yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, not, not that there isn't interaction. Obviously, you have interaction on the other person's turn. Um, and, and, and I will say, I do like that they took some of the best aspects of those games and incorporated them. And literally the point of where some cards are literally named and do the same effect from other games, you know, and I thought that was hilarious. Um, but the combos, the, the build your board state, everything is there and it moves very very quickly like you didn't like the game doesn't take very long i think to it play. took 10 minutes for us to play around yeah so 10 15 minutes nice. so i like that aspect because and and for me especially and um although i'm not sure how it's gonna play because we don't have enough product yet but i i love deck building games it's like half the fun for the game i love making something and see it come alive as i play the game my combos come off key pieces i have come out and it's just amazing um this game restricts you though heavily Whereas you can only have one or two colors in your deck. It doesn't matter because there's no mana restrictions, obviously. You have no, like, there's no color restrictions as far as putting out your resource. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like maybe that they should maybe expand that? Maybe you feel, because, I mean, you're only working with two colors. Now, granted, they have all of the characters in every color. Like, they have, st uh, you know, various versions of Mickey in every color and things like that. So you're going to get your characters, but... I mean, it would be amazing. I'm thinking already, it's like, man, wouldn't it be cool if I could have a third color or even a fourth color or a crazy, you know, six color deck, you know what I mean? Um, how do you feel like that they're restricting? You think that you think that is going to hurt it in the long run? You think they're going to change it maybe? Or I, I'm not bothered by the restriction of two because oftentimes when I played other games, if you tried, because other games, a lot of times you have to have the matching correspondent, like right. money, monetary value. So that doesn't bother me so much because... I mean, I think it can get convoluted if you have too many mechanics because I think each color uh, corresponds with a different play style and mm -hmm. some are more compatible. They do. They do. So that doesn't bother me, but I, I really hope to see in the future when they bring out more characters that they come out with more versatility thematic-wise because right now when you have a deck of two colors, like you might have Ariel, Stitch, Yzma, Pascal, and these are all from so many different movies. I would like to see more thematic. So I do have Ariel or like you said, Simba. You mm -hmm. can have them in multiple colors so I could play them in either deck deck and it just right. depends on the play style right. but unfortunately I couldn't do like an all villains deck or an all like you know little mermaid deck because I don't have enough cards in that same color of that same movie style and so later when more cards come out I would like to see the individual decks uh, uh, yeah and that, and that is actually a thing because just because it's already a product right now and I haven't looked through the card list. I'm sure if I could, I could look through the card list and everything, and I should be not knowledgeable at some point. But I'm curious. I know there are cards that trigger villains or princesses and things like that. So I'm curious as to, you know, if I pick whatever colors I pick, can I build an all-villains deck? And just everything triggers off each other, you know what I mean? I'm um, sure it's coming. And they already spoiled the next set. I don't know if you've seen any of it. Yeah. Like, oh, everybody's going crazy over the Winnie the Pooh. The honey, oh, okay. honey so He's a honey sorcerer. And he has like he has like a whole mage outfit on, and he has like a, a stick with the you know the the the, the honey stick and a little bee comb at the end. And he's like sitting there floating in the air, and he's holding it, and the the honey's dripping off the end or whatever. That's it looks it looks awesome. Everybody's like going gaga over the card because the art is very very good. And um, so is he wearing pants? Yeah, uh, maybe he has robes on. He has like oh, okay. sorcerer robes on. Oh, so well, that's you don't need pants under sorcerer robes. I, I do that all the time. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, <laughs> speaking of art. And just in general, the cards, we're, we got some highlight cards here. Go ahead and take me through, like, with some of your favorite cards. I mean, you've only played a couple games, but, like, tell me, like, what cards did you really like out of... I think you played this deck, if I'm not mistaken. I did. Or... Um, I mean, I liked Fire the Cannons because it was just simple. You just throw it down, you hit the target for two, well, tell, tell, and so... Yeah, it does, oh, it, does, it does two damage. Yeah, right? this one's just an easy action. You just play the card, it does what it does. So this one I was able to blast... Hey, hey, for two, and mm. immediately Hey, hey was off the boat, and yeah. I didn't have to worry about him anymore. But it's a one time use, you put it in your discard. And then I really like there's two different Simbas. I gotta look at them to see which Simba's the oh, one that's that I like. That's a Simba that you played. Oh, yeah. So this Simba allowed me to, when I was able to banish another creature, gain lore because that's one of the mechanics in this game. Mm -hmm. You get to choose, as Anthony stated, you don't really get to interact with instances or we're constantly battling. You get to choose whether or not you are going to take your creature out for an adventure and go exploring to get you lore or whether you are going to go up and battle another creature. So... The thing is, with this one, if I make the choice to battle, then obviously I can't get the lore. But Simba, if I banish the other creature, also lets me get lore. So I get, like, 
My you're cake, the best in uh, yeah, you're the cake and eat it too, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's what I really liked about him. Mm -hmm. And then I really like the friends on the other side card because I think it's just cute how you can play these actions and pair them with characters and have the characters sing the songs and then it kind of beefs up or ramps up your characters and what you can do. Oh yeah. So it makes yeah. it more customizable. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like the I like the the song mechanic. I mm -hmm. do I do like that a lot. Um, for me, I am kind of, I'm a blue player for Magic, so I'm a jerk. Um, but I like cards that, that do have the interaction or make you think, instead of just straightforward, like putting a, a, a creature down and questing. I like being able to mess with people's board state as much as possible. And, and like, um, one game me and Tom played, I was constantly doing that. And so some of my favorite cards, straight up, just removal. It's one of my favorite stuff. You banish chosen character, literally pay five, get rid of a character. I also really love the cannon card because it's well costed. It's one cost and you do two damage. Every other card I've seen that does more damage costs a lot more like the three damage card you had i think was like three yeah it costs three yeah it costs three that's two more to do one more damage but i noticed a lot of characters have a lot of three lives so that's probably why it's costed that way i don't know how they handled their ramp um but there's other cards that are amazing that i like even just like rapunzel she's a strong card she quests for two but when she comes out she takes a, a point from your opponent she gets rid of an opponent's oh, that's lore nice. i didn't see that one come out. oh yeah yeah no um i wasn't playing that deck at the time i think um, but there's other little tricky cards I like. Iago's very cool. He, 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 got, he has, you got a problem, and when you tap him, you, uh, you give a chosen character reckless, which means that they can't quest at all. They can only challenge other characters. Okay. And that's important because some characters are designed just to quest. Like, their whole gimmick is questing. And it's like, okay, well, guess what? Your, your one six character that does all this stuff in questing can't quest anymore. Have a nice day. And so they're forced to kill Iago, otherwise you're never questing with that character again. Um, and same for Mad Hatter. Actually, he's almost my MVP. He so was he, in the match. I week. Like, I like oh Mad yeah, Hatter, he's yeah. he's awesome card. He's just just an amazing card. So he costs five. So he's a little pricey, and he's only two four. You're like, well, why is he good? Well, he has three on his lore for questing, which is insane. It's a very. I mean, I don't really see three on anybody almost ever. I haven't and, seen anybody more than three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's not yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, I don't see threes. Like threes are rare. I never see threes. So that's strong already. And you're like, okay, well, dang. Uh, on top of that. Whenever he's challenged, so when anybody ever attacks him, you draw. You get to draw a card. So not only are you putting him out there as a target to quest for three, because you're going to at least quest once for him for yeah. three, but you're also going to get card draw from, from him. And, and, and any TCG, card draw is extremely important. Extremely. And in this game, I've noticed there's not really a lot of card draw. Like, there's not a lot of stuff to get. Like, there are card draw. There are some cards that will draw you a couple here and there and stuff like that. But having a character that comes out, gives you three lore, and, on, and they're going to want to kill him because he's... He's, he's cranking three lore every turn. They're, they're basically making it so they're forced to let you draw cards, which is great. I love that card. Um, so, yeah, just some amazing cards like that that really combo or really are just a good... I like the card design space of the whole thing. I just love how they, they thought of that. You know what yeah, I, mean? I also think that they did a good job with matching the abilities or what the cards do with the characters. To make it, yeah, yeah, I, th yeah. I thought that was really well done. And there's also thematic ones. Like, I like, is it this Ariel that... Like, some have drawbacks. Like, this one, she can't sing songs. So there's a mechanic yeah, in this game because she lost her voice. Yeah, obviously. So I thought that was kind of cute. Like, there's the um, characters can tap to sing songs, and basically you get a free action out mm -hmm. of it. Um, but, like, Ariel, she doesn't have a voice. She can't sing a Sorry, Ariel, you can't sing a song today. You know what I mean? Um, but overall, so what are you feeling? Are you going to go out and buy boxes tomorrow? Or what's your final hot take Ain't on this? Ain't nobody buying boxes tomorrow. Okay, like, okay, like, okay. Like let's, boxes. let's just say in a perfect world, we can go down to our shop, wherever we're going to, and buy some boxes. Like, would you, do you see yourself investing in this in the future? Do you see a, uh, a heavy investment, a light investment? Are you all in, half in, or are you just buying some starter decks and just calling it a day? What? I will probably buy a couple starter decks, call it a day, with the exception of like special releases for something that is like, like if they came out with a Nightmare Before Christmas one, that's my favorite movie. You know what right. I mean? Like, like I might pack. get the few little like ones that are exception. I'm not so going to go you, all you like, in. You like buy singles? You'll like yeah, buy singles. Yeah, I'll definitely. I definitely want to have a few. It's definitely something that I'll have, but I'll be more selective with it. I'm not right. going all in. Right. Um, however, I am going to be on the hunt. So anybody watching, I'm on the hunt because now that I've played this game, I know that this is going to be like something my niece would be obsessed with and she her goal is she wants say wants to open her own board game publishing company Aww. she's all she just turned eight and Aww. she is started her collection i think she's at like 30 games right wow. now yeah and so she, she should start ravensburger well you see that's the thing i just now that i see this i'm like this is going to be her hot item that she's going to want for the holidays and so oh, now yeah. i've got to like find this and get it for and her. we haven't even gotten to the holidays yet we're going to even <laughs> no, want to take a half hour for like, holidays oh, man. that's a smart move like singles are the way cheaper to get into it um you don't get the joy of cracking the pack 
and maybe pull in. So, so the thing about the value of Lorcana right now is it's kind of off the hook, so to speak. And um, the high value cards though are really locked into these 10 cards that are super hard to get. They're super art foil, whatever. Those cards are hundreds of dollars. Most of the other cards though, um, I will say are not terribly expensive. Right now, I, obviously the price is still raised because of availability, yeah. but you can still get most of the cards you want without breaking the bank. You can get a lot of cards, uh, unless it's the top like 10 cards. You're not you spend a five, six, seven, eight dollars, you know, on, the, on, on, a, on a single, which is not horrible depending on the. But card the card. expensive ones, the nice thing is right now they have a counterpart with cheap. It's the yes. same card. So yeah, the 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 super expensive cards because we pulled one and it was like two hundred something dollars, um, which believe it or not that was uh, from one booster wow. pack. Yeah, no, nice. seriously, yeah. it was like the first pack we opened because these the starter decks come with one booster pack, oh. and the first one we opened we're like oh. This looks spiffy, and it was literally, cool. it was a Hades card, and it was a full art foil, which magic is cool, but it's no big deal, like, it's not necessarily an expensive card, and we looked, and basically, they are alternate versions of a card that's already in the game, they just give it a full art treatment, different art, oh, okay. and make it yeah. foil. Those cards are, those cards are the money cards, those cards, there's only like 10 of them, and they're all a couple hundred dollars or more right now, because, you know, the scarcity of it is so And low. see, I'm the type of person, I would be happy with the, the regular yeah. Dollar version. Oh yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And all those cards, like you can get the regular version for not, not you know, usually not a whole lot. Yeah. I think the only one that's still expensive, regardless, is Elsa. Elsa's like off the hook. Her her <laughs> alternate card's like seven hundred or whatever dollars, and then the regular card is like fifty or sixty. So that I mean, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, of it's course, Elsa. it's Elsa. Um, so you are definitely kind of a buy a singles person, build your decks, not having. I will say that. Um, I mean, they obviously have a hot game on their hands. I do like it. I'm not. Like I, I love Disney, but I'm not a Disney file. I will, I will definitely though. I would sink money into a box or two because I know I'm going to make my money back if I pull any of those big cards. And I honestly like collecting sets, so I could see getting into this. Am I going to go heavy into it as Magic or whatever, where I'm buying every single set? No, I'm going to like, I'm going to try it out for a little while, build a couple of decks I like, see where it takes me. But I know um, Misfit Amanda, my wife, she will, she's like. She hate. It's funny. She spewed so much hate for this game because she's like, I know I'm gonna love this game. I need to hate it, or I'm going to buy everything from this game. Is she buying so, everything from it now? Uh, she wants to because I, we played one game. She's like, I can't hate this game. It's so good. So <laughs> that is a that is definitely a problem in my future. Uh, how about you, Tom? Since you're behind the camera, are you all in, half in? You're buying singles? Are you deck building at all? Or are you just going with whatever? I would say I'm out. You're out. You're out. He's I'm out. out. I mean, I'm not a huge huge Disney guy. Yeah, I so, kind of figured that anyway. So, so, but I, I mean, I love, I like the theme, I like the gameplay, but right. I also know that Star Wars is coming out next yeah. spring, yeah. and I'm but gonna. You, but, be you, all but you, but you play, Star but you would play this game if oh, I I'd make play. decks. I, I, I yeah. want to play this here now with these starter decks. Yeah. I want to play it. I'm cool. And that's a. It's a fun game. And yeah. It's just it's it doesn't have the theming that I'm gaga about, so yeah. I'm not going to jump into it. And that's a good sign. Like when you make a good game, even if you don't like the theming, and like for for Tom, especially with you, you're big on theme. If it, he doesn't even like the theming, and he'll play the game. So I mean, you have a good game when even if you could care less maybe about Disney or have very like lateral like you know I like maybe one thing, and you can still play. That's a really that's yeah, a really good that, sign. And of playing game. both this and Star Wars, while they have a lot of similar hits in them. Mm -hmm. I like the Star Wars game better. Yeah. But and I'm has, more into Star Wars. But it's got the theme. So that's, yeah. where, that's where it leans there. Yeah. I can't pay for yeah. two. My so, God, I'm not making enough money to get in a two collectible card no, none, of a, none of us are no, making money in this. Um, so that's our hot take because we'll talk all day long, guys. But when it comes down to it, a hot take is, and you've heard it from all of us here, this game is good. This game, period, end of story, is good. Do you need to invest heavily into it? No. Um, like uh, the Professor of Magic, singles are always cheaper. I say if you have more than a passing interest, if you like Disney, if you like specific characters, buy a starter deck or just buy singles enough to build your deck and call it a day. If you're all in, I'm not going to, anything I say is not going to change anything anyway. <laughs> you're already, you're, buying, gonna, you're already buying everything you can find anyway, so that doesn't really change anything. What it comes down to is it is a good game. Yes, it is a very good game. And even if you don't like the theme, I highly recommend just taking a, just, just go and Take a look, play a game or two. You'll find that it is a, actually a very solid, well-crafted game so far. And, and you might find a game that you could play with other people and not need to invest heavily in because more than likely, if it's at a table, they probably are invested in it. <laughs> and once they're supply, and what, yeah, once, decks are 30 bucks. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole other. But yeah, once once they once they get the supply issues fixed and everything, and they already talked about the next expansion, so it looks like they're, they're off to a good start. So, um, so that's our hot take on Lorcana. you have anything else you want to add? Cadence, so I gotta talk to you there for a minute. You know, like, uh... No, I just need two starter decks now. Just right. throwing that out there. Anybody? 
All right, let's go. We're going to go to Target right now, guys. We'll see you later. We're going to go go hunting for uh, some Lorcana. Good luck. Good luck to everybody <laughs> trying to get your Lorcana today. Until then, of course, this is Miss Fit Anthony. And Miss Fit Cadence. All right, we're going to go. Three, two, one. Yep. Game, Game on. on. Thank you.